Hey, how's it going guys? Today we're going to be looking at some quick tips for re-EQ. There are a lot of great EQ plugins out there, but there are some advantages to using re-EQ inside of Reaper. Tip number one, there's a dedicated shortcut to show and hide or insert re-EQ on the selected track. So if I have track one selected, I can press that button and re-EQ is already open, so it closed. And track two doesn't have re-EQ, so I can press the same button and insert that. If I want to close it, I just press the same button again. So in the action list, if you search for track EQ, you'll see track insert slash show re -EQ track EQ. And for me, this is one of my most used plugins. So having a dedicated button for that makes a lot of sense. Tip number two is that there is some customization available. So we can turn off the tabs, we can turn off the grid. And after a recent update this year, we can actually resize this plugin to fill the screen if we want. So if we like this, we can click on the little plus button beside the presets and save preset as default. Call this something like start. And next time you load in re-EQ, it loads in re-EQ with the exact settings that you like. For me, I like to have the tabs on and the grid turned on. So I'm just going to update my preset by clicking on save preset and save over it. Tip number three, using a narrow bandpass filter and an LFO, we can have a tempo synced auto wah effect. So I'm gonna do this on this pad sound. Here's how it sounds. Just a nice pad sound. Open up re-EQ. I'm going to turn off all of the bands except for band one. I'm gonna set this band to band pass shape like that and we'll put it in the middle and we can adjust the bandwidth to control how much of the highs and lows are being taken out. So it sounds like this now. We're going to take the frequency control and just move that then go to the param button at the top and enable parameter modulation here. So in this window we set this uh, baseline value to the middle. We go to LFO we set this to a triangle shape, and we set the direction to centered. Now let's hear how it sounds. And we can adjust the bandwidth to make this narrower. And we can adjust the speed, make it tempo synced. We can set this to one quarter note, and it moves like that along with the song. As slow as we want, we can have this set to 12 quarter notes, and it'll move very slowly. So that's a pretty basic auto wah effect. Tip number four, we can start with the same setup and then change the LFO to an audio control signal, and that will allow us to create a envelope follower sort of filter effect. So here's our starting point sound. We're just gonna turn off the LFO, uh, turn on audio control signal, and set this to receive from its own signal. Turn on re-EQ, and here's how it sounds now. Change this to centered. Make it a little bit faster. So that gives more of a dynamic movement to it. It's following the envelope of that sound signal. If the waveform flows a different way, it's going to have a different effect rather than a more of a rhythmic timing-based effect. Next, we're going to create a telephone or a small speaker effect. So again, we're going to use that arpeggio sound. Insert re-EQ. Band one, we're going to drag it down so it becomes a high pass. Band four, we're gonna drag down so it becomes a low pass. And we're gonna make this pretty narrow, like this. And then we're gonna grab band three and make a narrow uh, peak 
around 1 and 2K. And we can adjust the bandwidth of this so that it's uh, worse sounding, I guess you would say. And the further you go with this, the smaller that sound is going to become, sound more like coming out of a small speaker. This is a really useful effect for lo-fi vocals or lo-fi guitar intros or drums. You wouldn't have this on for the whole song, but it's an interesting effect and it can add a lot of contrast to your music. For this next example, you may not hear it in headphones. This is a low frequency boost using a high pass. So we're gonna set band one to a high pass. We're going to lower the uh, bandwidth number so it's steeper. We're getting about a 6 dB boost at the crossover point. And we're gonna set this, um, for this kick drum, it sounds good around, uh, I found it to be right around 47 Hertz. So I'm gonna bypass that so we can hear the original kick drum. And on. And for me, I've got a subwoofer and adding this big boost here uh, is both controlled, but also you really feel it. And if you want this a little bit tighter sounding, you can uh, take band two, bring it down to just above that boost that you're adding uh, somewhere around there and kind of get a more uh, sculpted sound. And an effect like this is more controlled uh, because we're not doing, we're not boosting everything in the low end. Like if we took a 6 dB boost like this, it's a much different sound. So as I said earlier, you may not hear this in your headphones or small speakers, but this is something you're really going to feel when you have a good stereo system. This last tip is for making steeper filters. So the filters in ReQ are fairly gentle slopes. Uh, it's 6 dB per octave slope. You can increase the bandwidth, uh, make it more narrow, but then you end up with this peak, which it worked well with that kick drum effect, but for other things you don't want to boost as you're cutting. So the solution is to just keep adding in more filters with the same settings uh, to increase the steepness of that filter. So here's the bass sound that I've got here. And so I'm going to add in re -EQ, and I'm gonna cut off everything above 300 hertz. And this is using the default uh, high pass filter in here. So it takes out a considerable amount of the low end, uh, but not everything. We can still hear that there's lows there. So I'm gonna go to band two and enable that. This has the same settings and you can see our filter curve changes to be a much more steep filter. And so here it is with two filters at the same setting. And so I'm going to add in three more filters, a total of five filters at the same frequency settings. And so now this is going to be a much more aggressive filtered sound. So there you go, that's how you make a steeper filter in ReQ. So there you go guys, seven tips for using ReQ. Um, hopefully these are some things you hadn't thought of before and things that you can use. I'm going to make another video soon about some scripts that MPL made that enhance some of the features in ReQ. Uh, really cool stuff. I wanted to put it all in this video, but it's just gonna be too long and I think that deserves its own video. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Join our Facebook group, Reaper Blog Community. Support the Reaper Blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.